Hi there, we want to welcome you to this episode of Indie Film Collective's Indie Film Spotlight. Today we are standing here with A.B. Seidel and I am your host, Michelle Lasseter. This is the show that celebrates indie film and the artists that create them. A.B., how are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, fantastic. You did a film that is going to be here at the Festival of Cinema. That's right. Yeah, I'm actually from Forest Hills, so this is a really cool opportunity for me to screen at the theater I went to growing up. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! Uh, tell us about uh, the title of your film and what it's about. Sure, um, the movie's called Some of Her Parts. The idea really came from my co-writer Felix, who can't be here today, but he and I were talking about um, my experience being diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And uh, as anyone who is close to someone with a chronic illness or knows somebody with a chronic illness knows, um, that experience is often one where you're asked to sacrifice for your health. Uh, for me, that sacrifice is primarily financial. How much money am I willing to spend on my expensive treatment, on frequent doctor visits, on procedures, surgeries, etc.? cetera? Um, but we imagined what that idea, the sacrifices we make for our health, would look like pushed to its extreme. What if there were a world where you could give up parts of yourself to live longer? How much of yourself could you give up? And what would happen if you gave up everything? Would you still be you? And that's really the movie. That's amazing. I know that when we watched it, we were had so many questions after we watched it. It was just fantastic. I mean, it really does introduce just an amazing concept and an idea. Um, so you already talked about Felix. We yeah. were wondering how you guys came up with the idea. Are you guys big Black Mirror fans? I mean, I know you talked about yeah. the history of it, but it's definitely you know sci-fi, yeah. and this could have gone any other kind of direction. So yeah. um, absolutely. I mean, in those conversations about my illness and and what that you know, we were really just railing against our healthcare system and thinking about the cruelty and avarice of a system that asks people to sacrifice for their health or one that requires people to make such extreme sacrifices for their health. And that was really the genesis of the idea. But I think to your question about Black Mirror and the Twilight Zone, there is a shared DNA among our film and among those very popular series. Um, and it's a type of speculative fiction that takes our world and you know maybe twists an idea um, to reflect something in our society. And we weren't specifically inspired by either of those, but I, I'm always happy to be compared to things that are massively popular. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's just like that. So you talk a little bit about um, the tribulations that you've had to go through and how that kind of inspired mm -hmm. this. So um, I imagine that you're still dealing with these things. Yeah. Um, is that going to inform, do you think, uh, future storytelling? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, I'm fortunately in remission right now, so Yay. that's cool. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, but, you know, the process of being diagnosed with an illness that has no cure means that you're sick forever. And a lot of what it means to be sick forever is something I'm still certainly dealing with and figuring out, and I don't know if I'll ever figure out. Um, so it's something that will inform all of my work. Um, in regards to this movie specifically, uh, I think this is only one idea um, among, you know, hundreds of ideas that emerge from this experience, um, and also just the healthcare experience at large in this country. Um, I mean, we saw even in like the debates last week, uh, people talking about how we have a sickness care system in our country and not a healthcare system. And I think that these ideas are uh, generate stories which need to be told, um, and yeah, we've got plenty more where this came from. <laughs> So is this your way of kind of railing against the man? Oh, 100%. I'm always railing against the man. I have a very uh, anti-status quo. Um, I mean, my production company is actually called Radical Rhinoceros Pictures, um, which, uh, very, very quick aside, um, radical because for the exact reasons I just described, and Rhinoceros uh, to be named after the Eugenie Inesco uh, satirical play um, that railed against fascism. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, well, that's our whole thing. We want to make movies that challenge people and challenge the status quo. So are you guys already planning your next film? or are you going to make this one maybe into a feature, hopefully? Good question. Um, you know, this we actually came up with this idea as part of a feature, and that is a story that we've been developing and have uh, plans to make, but I think we've been talking about some of her parts so much, um, and we've been lucky enough to share it at uh, a bunch of festivals. I think we're really excited to tell another story, and we have several other ideas in development that we're um, currently working on, and uh, hopefully we'll be making our next film soon. Well, I can tell you that all of us, after we got done watching it, we were like, we hope there's more about this well, because you. we need more. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, can you tell us about why you decided to make this into a short? Mm -hmm. um, there's so many questions that you kind of left open. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of a uh, philosophy of short filmmaking that I have. I think that questions are ultimately better than answers when it comes to a short. I think that if you only have 
10 minutes of an audience's time, better to leave them with a conversation than to you know, kind of ask them to listen to you talk and then walk away and say, well, now we know everything that that film, film and filmmaker had to say. I want someone to come uh, to me after watching our film and say, oh, that was so interesting. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure what this meant, or I have this idea about what this meant. And, and the film, I feel really lucky that the film has generated so much conversation. Um, we've had many audience members come up to us with their own ideas or theories about what the you know, significance of certain things in the movie uh, mean. And I, I feel very grateful to have generated conversation. I think that's what the goal is. I do have another question about your process with the actress, mm -hmm. because um, for anybody who has not seen some of her parts yet, you have a lead actress who interacts emotionally with what is essentially a box yeah. on the bed. So how was that process directing wise for you talking to the actress about how to interact and then any conversations you and your lead may have had about that? It's the type of performance, Jess, she's an incredible actor, and it's the type of performance that isn't often recognized because her scene partner is an inanimate object. Um, but I'm really fortunate that the festival nominated her for Best Actress. Um, so it feels wonderful to have that performance recognized in that way. And I think on set, we really talked about how, you know, while superficially, talking to a box on a bed might seem strange and alien, there's actually a universal human experience of encountering a loved one who may be non-responsive or you know you may not know if they are or are not there inside the shell of their body and this is something that we all have experience doing and just because in our movie it's a box with a floral print on it uh, that doesn't mean that the experience from an actor's perspective the emotional experience of doing so is is alien and i think that we were really able to communicate in that language talk about what what this means in terms of you know the actual character is just visiting her grandmother her grandmother happens to be a box, but that's separate from her emotional experience. Yeah. And so that felt really natural. Um, and we've had audience members come up to us and say, you know, this really evoked my own experiences of visiting family members in the hospital. Um, so I was really grateful for that. That's true for me. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I know how this feels. <laughs> yeah. And so I felt so much for her. That's why I was curious about your process with her personally. Thank so, you, yeah. yeah. Maybe absolutely. there's something to be said for, you know, if you make a great actor's scene partner an inanimate object, they can just project all sorts of interesting <laughs> emotional work onto that box. <laughs> no, truly, truly. It's yeah. amazing. Um, you talked a little bit about your production company. Do you guys have uh, anything coming up immediately? Yeah. Um, so my production company, Radical Rhinoceros Pictures, uh, Rad Rhino for short, um, we do all sorts of work. We do um, obviously our own original work. We also do branded and commercial work. Um, so we just directed a commercial uh, for uh, a branded documentary for this uh, like company out in LA. It was fun. Um, but in terms of original work, we are currently working on a film um, the working title is Romeo, Oregon, Julie, Inc. And it's a love story about a world where corporation, corporate personhood is pushed to its extreme as well. Um, I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, like brand accounts now have personalities. Mm -hmm. And like Sunny D is depressed and you know, like Lil Debbie is like philosophical. <laughs> right. And it's very strange. So I imagined, you know, what would a world be like where uh, these corporations are real people? And what would happen if two corporations fell in love? Um, so that's the movie we're working on next. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to yeah, he hear fun. that and see that. That's so amazing. Thank you. Um, I want to just step back a bit and talk about some of her parts once again. Yeah. Um, it has such an emotional journey to it. I mean, obviously, you took a lot of personal experience and turned it into this. Um, your lead played that emotional arc amazingly. Um, in the development of it, when you guys first started writing it to where you got to, how much did that change and did that journey change for you guys? It changed dramatically. Um, to be honest, when we wrote the script, we were like rolling on the floor laughing. We thought this was the funniest like dark comedy ever. There was something to us, the idea of like, imagine a person talking to a box and treating that box as if it's their grandmother. Like I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And then the first rehearsal, and we have these wonderful actors and you know, there's an emotional realism to the work they're doing, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my god, it's not funny at all when you're visiting your sick grandmother in the hospital and you're not sure if she's gonna make it. And so all of a sudden we realized we had a drama in our hands. Um, and so that was like a very, like, turn. I've never had that happen before, right. where I thought a movie was one thing and it instantly it became something else. Do you think that that's their portrayal of it, or was that because you guys wrote it as a drama and just didn't know? I mean, I definitely tried directing it as a comedy. You know, I saw that rehearsal, I was like, oh no, that's not it at all. <laughs> um, really, we're going for this, you know, much uh, more satirical tone. There's like a more, uh, a drier humor here. You know, I think I referenced like films like The Lobster, we were talking about work like Lanthimos's work. And the more we tried that, the more it just didn't feel emotionally real to me. I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense at all. It's not funny. <laughs> so uh, if we couldn't be funny and we couldn't, you know, 
like make that work. I just figured let's lean into what the movie wants to be. Yeah. And I think we let the movie speak to us in that way. That's amazing. I mean, like I said, we all just absolutely loved it. So is there anything that you really discovered on this journey, maybe either about yourself or the film itself mm. or anything like that? Actually, sort of separate to this, this was the first movie our company ever crowdfunded. Um, and we had a successful Kickstarter. And that was a, an insane process. And I'm sure anyone who's ever done that knows this. Yeah. But I, I think we really learned that, you know, uh, we'd like done all so much research and like how to generate buzz and like share your project all over and all of that worked and it generated a ton of views and a lot of people saw what we were doing but very few people donated and everyone who's ever done any fundraising knows that you need to just reach out to people and ask them to help yeah. and the most amazing thing I took from this experience was like I talked to every person I've ever known in my entire life <laughs> and asked them to help out and for the most part they did um, and I think that as kind of humiliating as it can be to like reach out to people you haven't spoken to in 10 years. There's something really encouraging and beautiful about fostering a community around a work of art and knowing that people will come to it if you just ask. Well, and I imagine after they've seen this film, they feel really good about donating. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope that's the case. Do you have any advice for future filmmakers? Um, I mean, in kind with that, I would say that, you know, trust people to come to you and come to your work. If you can communicate what you're trying to do with people and you can share that vision with people who are similarly excited to make interesting and challenging art, then you can get a community excited about it and people will be motivated to help you make it. Um, beyond that, I don't know anything. I'm still figuring it out myself. So, uh, you know, good luck. <laughs> I would say, and also write an amazing script. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. And congratulations for being at the Festival of Cinema. I mean, it's just, that's a feat in of itself. And you said you've been at other festivals. So yeah. really, congratulations on thank such you. an amazing project. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. And it's been a great opportunity to talk to you about the film. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you, guys. Stay tuned. We have another episode. I'm Michelle Lasseter, and we'll see you soon. We can make the